to wait for us this morning. I went ahead and prepped last night. This is for a rudder and centerboard uh, restoration for a laser sailboat. Um, just purchased one down in the Keys. Uh, it's an older model, uh, 2002, so what we wanted to do was essentially restore her to as uh, new as we could get it. Um, and, and I've got it just here behind you. Um, and, but today we're working on the boards. All of this stuff will provide uh, product links down in the description. One of the things that we've done actually is, is uh, sanded the board down, kind of a preliminary sand, nothing too heavy, uh, just to see what needs uh, attention, right? And some fiberglass reinforcing. Um, so down here in the uh, tips, I've already sanded off the where it needs the attention. There were some about three cracks in the center board. So what I did yesterday was essentially sand it down with a filing tool, big long one. Got it at Home Depot, I think, or Lowe's, uh, Ace Hardware. Um, those are the big ones down here in Florida anyways. Um, I used that and I sanded it down to a flat edge. And hopefully you guys are seeing that clearly. We had one, two, and three, and four for the tip. And the reason we did that is so we could put um, veneer pins in them. Right, um, so depending on the width and area of the damage, we'll decide on how many pins you need. Um, and these are a basic 15 millimeter veneer pins. I got about 75 of them, um, very lightweight. That is what I used to hammer in each of these guys. Right, and you just take a needle nose plier to the end so you can actually grasp you know, that why you just hammer in the top, do, 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 nothing crazy. And you wanna make them such that it's actually straight across the top, right? All you're doing is essentially reinforcing the, uh, the, the area in which we're gonna fix. And then um, I did, I, I don't know if you can notice, however, it does dip in right here. So we're gonna do a little extra epoxy or resin here as well, just to add some edge to it and make it, you know, flat all the way across. Cause as you can see, we're missing a, a big chunk and then obviously the tip these are very very common for these centerboard this repair so let's talk a little bit about what what we're using for this project so um, first and foremost clamps we're going to be using these you probably only need two or three um, depending on how many you have as far as the, the uh, restoration the other thing you need is some uh, wide masking tape. This is uh, probably sufficient an inch and a half to two inches, something like that. Um, I was running out, so I grabbed some green, which is probably, it's like painter's tape, it's probably good. Um, the other thing you need is some scissors. We talked about the veneer pins, um, paintbrush, mixing stick, mixing bowls. All of this stuff was bought on West Marine and all of it West Marine price matches which is really nice. So if you can find it ahead of time, walk in there prepared and, and you can save a lot of money. Um, the actual fiberglass we're gonna be using today is a uh, also a West Marine fiberglass mat. This is a heavyweight, one and a, one and a half ounce, 42 gram mat. This is uh, used with all marine resins. Um, 38 by 34, I've been using this about a year and a half. I, I haven't gone through this stuff. It's no joke, it's pretty expensive. It's about 60 bucks, I think, uh, 70 bucks, depending. You can't price match it because it's a West Marine product. So it is what it is, but um, I'm sure you can find it somewhere else if you really wanted to keep digging. Rubber gloves. I also cut out some bits of cardboard because what we're going to do is take for the damaged areas, we're going to tape this across to for support. And that way it has something nice to be able to rest upon. And then later we'll just peel it off the masking tape. We'll show you that. I do have some uh, goggles just to protect guys. Very, very important. This stuff is very, very toxic. You don't want this on your skin. You don't want to be breathing it in. You don't want it in your eyes. So make sure you're buttoned up, gloves, um, and goggles. I do, we live in Florida, so it's super sunny outside. Today it's a bit overcast, so I probably won't need these, um, but I use these outside a lot. And they're actually protected from um, uh, vapors as well, so they can't get in here, which is what you want for this stuff, especially for the filler, because it's like a powdery substance, and when you start mixing it, it, it just kind of comes up out of the cup and you can like breathe that shit in and it's not good for you. So don't, don't test it, it you know, it's not, not good. So we'll be wearing those later as well. Um, 202 solvent is actually gonna be used to clean our project before we go ahead and do the epoxy resins. You wanna get all of them. Um, it actually removes moisture, any oils or, or, or you know, dirt deposits or buildup uh, while you're working on the project. So it gives you a nice project to start with. 
um, 105 epoxy resin and 205 fast hardener. Uh, they go hand in hand, catalyst to uh, hard uh, finished product. Um, the other thing, very, very important guys, respirator. Um, just, I, I can't stress it enough, super, super toxic. So if for nothing else, have a, a mask, gloves, and, and, uh, and something to protect your eyes. Nice and tight, and then cover. I can barely suck in, and that's what you want, so. And there is an expiration date on these two guys. You can't just use them and reuse them, but it just depends on how long you use them. Um, there's a, a kind of an in-service date. I do highly recommend that you guys get like a co uh, like coveralls, um, any sort of fiberglass so it doesn't get in on your uh, skin or clothes, and then a spray smock, so it's essentially protecting your uh, head, uh, hair, ears, getting in anywhere, right? Even if you do it with clothes on, you don't have this stuff, and you can't go get it. It's so cheap, it's 10 bucks, but even if you can't get it, um, you know, wear a long sleeve shirt, and then when you're done, make sure you flip it inside out and you get it off your body and, and go try to wash it and spray it with a hose, because it's, it's no joke, so. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I did uh, use a uh, 100 grit sanding paper for sanding, as you can see. It's, it works really well. I'm actually gonna go back over it with the uh, orbital sander um, and uh, see if we can get through more of this paint because we wanna make sure that when we repaint it, there's nothing else there and it'll actually, the new paint will stick, the primer and then paint. And then this is the 100 grit sandpaper I use for it. Oh, and one last thing here, guys. Um, I pulled these stoppers out of the center board so, um, I oh yeah, it was just a screw. You just unscrew it. Um, if you have the old one, you unscrew it, uh, if you're wondering, by the way, because I was trying to force it off. I was like, oh yeah, you just unscrew it. Um, and then something you might want to go ahead and buy ahead of time are some new laser stoppers. All right, guys, so here's our fiberglass mat. Um, I mean, you can feel the thickness and strength in this stuff. What we're going to be doing is essentially cutting um, about three individual layers for each project. Essentially what we'll do is cut out the first um, project template. Use our scissors here. An edge piece. We'll cut a big piece and then um, two little pieces. Um, so let's do the first one which is essentially a straight. And I always like to cut a bigger template than what I think it's going to be. And then I'll go over it um, I'll compare it to what I'm working with. As you see, it's it's much bigger than what we need it to be, so I need roughly that. So we'll cut it to about there. Remember, you can always keep going, but you can't go backwards. So take your time, keep cutting. And you want it to sit inside there, inside your, your project, right? So a little bit more. I think the distance is good. Yep, a little more. And again, I like these frayed edges. So that's good. That's what you want. Um, so that's good. That That might be a great little kind of template. So I'll line this piece up right here and then I'll cut about three more giving us a total of four, two on each side. I think that should be suffice. Two more. See how easy this is? Once you get your template going you can just cut your glass no problem. So that's that's probably good to go. We have two, and you'll feel it too once you lay it in there. Whether or not it's going to be enough, you always want to go more than you think, because you can always sand it down. But if you find yourself with a big kind of envelopment or a, a, a droop, uh, you, you can't. And then you have to re-sand it and start over. So more is better. Moral of the story. All right, I think we're in a good spot. We have two, four. Templates, and we can put two either side, 
and that way um, should have enough. Now if you'll notice, I actually left a nice, um, you know, half inch or so off the blade. So essentially what, what you're looking there is you're going to get be able to cut that off with a hacksaw later when it dries and you're going to be able to uh, fine uh, tune it and sand it for a nice sharp blade. So you do want more, uh, again more is, is good, you can always sand it down. Um, so great, we have our template there. I think we can call it a day for that project. We have uh, three more to go. One, two, three. And I'll be using these guys to make those. That's a great little one right there. Okay, I think we're good to go. We have uh, all of our um, kind of templates cut out. Actually, we have the tip here. I have uh, roughly two and two, right? Two and two. So two on that side, two on this side. Um, and again, we want to overextend it so it goes up and above the tip. So that's always good because we can shave it back, sand it back. I actually cut two little small strips as well. I only did one and one on each side because we don't. I don't. I don't see it needing that much reinforcement. All we want is to kind of reshape that edge. Um, frankly, I like to do it for the whole side, but it's actually not that bad. It's just these areas. So we'll do one on that side, one on the other side. Same here, two and two, and same here, two and two. So I think we're ready. We have uh, sanded our board. We have enough um, kind of uh, fiberglass showing to adhere to on all of our projects, right? And then we've cut all of our templates. So uh, the first thing we want to do now is go ahead and start mixing our epoxies and resins. A little, uh, bit of 202 solvent. We just want to clean up the work area, make sure that it is uh, spotless and it's ready for adhesion of the fiberglass, right? So um, this does remove moisture, which is what anybody would should be worrying about when they're doing fiberglass work. We're ready to go here as far as taping. We've uh, cleaned up our project, we've cut our templates, we have our tape. We're going to go ahead and start taping it. I'm going to tape these two together as one project because of the cardboard that I have. Um, I would like to push down the tape a little bit and I just slide it in. And you'll see it oh, start to overlap on the other side. I'll use that one as the base layer now so it slides in a little easier. And I'll just kind of tuck it in there if it needs a little help. Remember, it, we do want it to hang out just a bit from the outside because we want to be able to shape it later. on each, we'll see. through remember this stuff's hardening as we speak so no time to dilly dally let's get it done still hasn't hardened so just goes to show you man if you just get a smaller batch you got a little bit more time the more you have the less time you have
the last thing. Don't lie them flat because you want them to essentially uh, dry in, in a position that's uh, equal and even so we can shape the board from either side and it's not big or smaller on either side. All right, so we'll let that sit. We'll kind of keep an eye on it. You know, it's not the end of the world if we find little bits and pieces where we missed or, you know, we need to add another layer of glass. <music> So what you want to do is take a blade and cut straight through. Uh, I purchased the hacksaw and then I just took the blade out of that hacksaw. But I imagine if I needed replacements I could definitely buy more. But you really just want to um, go even or parallel with the actual line. I try to go a little bit above and that way you can sand it down and still match. and 150 grit right now is, uh, there's a hundred on there um. We are day three of project. Just getting everything set up for us. So you guys don't have to wait around for that. Um, I think we're good. We'll set up out here on the lawn today because it was uh, a lot of sanding and chemicals going on. And I don't want to get that in the house. Well, we sanded, laid glass and sanded. We're moving on to filler. We have a 404 high density adhesive filler. He's still using the 105 and 205 fast hardener. Um, we laid the glass and then just kind of sanded it down to as close as we can to the edge. Now there's still some gaps that chipped away um, and, and, and there's like a little void in between here that's never good. Um, so I'm going to just fill that with high density filler and we're going to move on with this project. Also did the tip, came out pretty good, so we'll continue to scan that as well. Also have the uh, center board over here. And when you add that out of it, it actually gives it, um, you know, density. It's actually a structural as well, so you could stand on this and not break it. So you have your mask and your goggles on. You don't want to get this stuff in. Taper up. Get any on the board, just pull them off, man. Alright, you guys. That's about it. Just finished spray painting. Did about two or three coats on each side. So if you notice some of the paint's already coming off. We used the Krylon Supermax primer plus paint all in one. We got about four cans of it and uh, went through it no problem. Making sure that you read the directions on the Krylon because uh, you'll start to get some paint issues. But these are great club 
I think blades now will be able to use these as practice. Uh, there's a stark contrast between these and the race blades. Uh, but I think it came out pretty good considering how bad they were. Here's the other one here. This is the rudder. And you can see where kind of the, the repair was made. Went ahead and put in the, uh, the rudder bolt and uh, the tiller extension cord. Uh, so essentially all you need is the rudder stock to go on, but it's a nice backup blade if anything happens to my regular blades. Essentially two to three coats of Krylon Supermax, let it dry overnight, it's 24 hour dry time. And that's it. I also needed covers for these. I have a nice kind of cover bag for the new blades, but not the old ones. So I went ahead and sewed this. You know, just went to your local fabric store, essentially came in and, and hemmed in a little zipper all the way around. Um, and it's great. Kind of slides right in. Do one for the rudder as well. But if you don't want to spend another hundred bucks on rudder, and blade covers. Just go sew yourself some. All you need is a sewing kit. Yeah, and there you have it. Nice little cover. Same with the rudder. There you go. project complete. All right, so now we just want to take her out. Let's go have some fun. Why you checking it out? Why you making me need it? Let's move on.